Good morning, everybody. So this was the title of the talk I submitted. This is the talk I will give. Um, I will not talk about Sentinel-2 data, MODIS satellite data, another satellite doesn't make much difference, I'll justify why. And rather than focus on the uh, aerial photography, I'll talk, I'll mention how we use weather data in conjunction with the satellite data, and I'll mention what we did with the aerial photos. So this is an image you saw yesterday as well. It's the official monitoring data in Puglia of uh, plants that tested positive for Xylella. Um, and I, I commend the, the region for making these data available as points rather than just at administrative level because it's really useful to science. Um, the law uh, requires that these data really focus on establishing the front of the epidemic, uh, which is why areas further south are not being monitored anymore. That means that we don't really have a good view on the damage that Xylella has done in those areas that have been, been infected for longer. We know the damage is there. Um, you can see it if, if you go there. Uh, you can see it in uh, Google Earth. Um, but we don't really know very precisely how big it extends, which is important if you want to assess the impact on Xylella at larger scales. So the question we're trying to answer is, can we monitor severe damage to olive orchards across Apulia? Uh, what do we mean with severe damage? Let's establish that. Here is a series of photos illustrating a damage scale from zero in the top left, which is an entirely healthy looking tree, to number four, which is an, uh, a tree without any live branches or many live branches left. And then steps one, two, and three uh, which are the transition from zero to four. When we talk about severe damage, as we define it here, we focus on levels three and four, really. So, so very conspicuous damage at the level of trees. And that is what we try to monitor with satellite data. Just to be clear, we're not talking about early detection. Early detection we work on as well with sensors on aircraft. That's where you're trying to get those first symptoms on a tree. Uh, as it moves out of looking healthy and then after infection. So let's, let's make that clear. We're not trying to do early detection here. We're doing damage mapping. Olive orchards come in many different shapes and sizes, which is a challenge to remote sensing. They can look very uh, regular with uh, similar sized crowns. Uh, they can look very irregular with very different shapes and backgrounds. And that is important because when you look at satellite data, uh, from above, what you see mostly is the ground rather than the trees, as these aerial photographs illustrate. And then at a relatively small scale, you can have big variations in how green the, uh, that understory is. Has it been plowed? Here at the bottom, you see very small trees, which actually still might be healthy. They just might be recently planted. Drier, wetter, greener, less green areas. And that makes it challenging in when you look at images to say, is this an a healthy orchard or a non-healthy orchard, because most of the variation you're looking at is actually not the trees. So we chose a satellite time series that allows us to go also back in time, back to 2000, um, so that we can look at orchards through time to overcome some of these issues. The downside of those data is that the pixels are very big. So this is one pixel uh, as the MODIS satellite data sees it. So we're integrating, sorry, information across this entire area. On the upside, we have it back to the year 2000, and we have data every single year. So we thought about it a bit differently, and we thought really of that temporal aspect of what happens to an orchard when it goes from healthy to being uh, severely damaged. And basically, uh, what we hypothesized is that you go from a system that is dominated by an evergreen canopy, which the olive trees provide, to one which is dominated by much more shrubby vegetation and, a, and a, no longer a canopy. And that system differs profoundly because these trees, of course, access deep, older water with their deeper roots, whereas this shrubby vegetation uh, is much more sensitive to short-term changes in uh, water availability. So we further then predicted that as a system uh, gets, or an orchard gets severely damaged, you move away from, um, or, or you see a shift in the way the vegetation and its productivity responds to heat to drought, to water availability, and that we model from weather data. So basically we made a model that says, depending on the weather, how green, productive should the orchard look in the satellite data in a given year, 
And then we compare that prediction later on to what the satellite act actually sees, and the difference, we hope, would indicate the level of damage to the orchard. We work at the level of orchards, not at the level of trees. That's important to note. Uh, in the infected and buffer zone together, there are about 27,000 orchards. They cover over 2,000 square kilometers. And we furthermore focused on the large orchards. And we define those as being bigger than 12 and a half hectares. And we chose that because that gives us at least two modis pixels to look at for every single orchard. If you restrict it to those large orchards, you still cover 80% of the area, of the olive orchard area. So just keep in mind that we make conclusions on the large orchards. You probably need to add another 20% to make it comprehensive. So this is what the large orchards here in dark gray look like for uh, the infected area plus buffer zone. There's uh, just over 3,100 of them. And then we let that method loose. So we took that model that was trained on data from 2000 to 2010 with the observations from satellite of the presumably healthy olive orchards. We then tried to uh, have the model predict based on the weather data how productive slash green that signal should be. Then we took that same model, kept it running in the years after 2010, and compared it with what the satellite saw. If that difference is big, we hoped we would see areas that were severely damaged. So the first detections uh, we made among those 3,000 orchards, we let the model go, uh, are shown here. These areas here were detected as damaged uh, 2012, particularly 2013. And this is the area right in front of Gallipoli. So this is a first good sign that our model is actually picking up xylella-related damage, but this is because this is, of course, where the infection was first reported around 2013. So uh, yay for that. Um, but that's, of course, not sufficient to validate our, our method. I'll show, of course, the, the pre predictions for subsequent years later on. I'll just keep you waiting for those a bit. So how do we validate this model? Um, we have two sources of independent validation data. One is the official monitoring data, which includes not only the points where the infections have been found, but also the demarcated area. And th that's useful because we can assume that the buffer zone is xylella-free and hence damage-free. So we'll use that. And then the second source of the uh, information are the field observations made in nine plots where every single tree has been scored between zero and four in two subsequent years, and we can assess what's the level of damage as seen on the ground for these orchards. And that we can compare to our predictions. So first, to the official monitoring data. Um, this is the, the result for orchards in the buffer zone. So we assume those have no widespread damage. You see it through time, and this is basically that residual of our, our model prediction based on the weather compared to what we observed in the satellite. And we expect that to be around zero, because these orchards should be intact olive orchards. We see that signal from 2001 to 2017 indeed sit around the zero line. If it were higher, the orchard would be more productive than we expect. We have actually have a bit of a trend uh, of that in the last years, but uh, I'll leave that aside. If it were lower, then it means the olive orchard is not behaving like an olive orchard anymore because it's less productive than we'd expect. But we, for the orchards in the buffer zone, the behavior is as we'd, uh, as we'd hoped. Now I put on top of that individual orchards that we know were infected, but we showed them before they were infected. And they too, here every line is a different orchard, they sit around that zero line just as the orchards in the buffer zone do. And now I'll add them how they behaved after the date where the official data indicates they were infected. They look like this. So you see that that signal drops off very strongly, which indicates indeed that what a satellite sees in terms of greenness slash productivity is less than what we'd expect based on the weather if these olive orchards were intact. And this is really the signal that we're exploiting to map because we're basically then saying, when does a line for an olive orchard drop be below the expected value and stay below the expected value? And that we can map every year to estimate when damage occurred in a particular orchard and if damage occurred. So that's the first validation. Second validation, if you focus here on the y-axis, this is the field observations going from healthy trees to sick trees 
at damage level three. So this is averaged at the level of plots. Every dot is a plot. That is the average level of damage of the trees in that plot. And on the x-axis here, you have those residuals just like you had on the y-axis in the previous plot, where here are the orchards. We don't see the behavior being too different from what we expect. And here that the behavior is very different. And you see that correlates very well, well, pretty well. Uh, our square is about 0 0.6 with basically as the damage is greater, we see those anomalies uh, increase. Uh, I won't explain here exactly the scale, but uh, that's why you see the negative correlation. Then we have a couple of dots here that are clearly off. Uh, we're not too worried about those because if you look at the size of those plots, it's only a few hectares. These plots, they're actually less than a fifth of one single pixel in the satellite. So we're looking for a very small signal in a pretty big pixel. Uh, so that 12.5 hectare rule here doesn't apply. All these plots are a lot smaller than the, the minimum observation unit of the satellite data. Actually, uh, I'm not presenting these data well because these are nine plots measured over two different years. So here we color them by year. And we see also that the condition was worse in 2017 than in 2016. And also that our method picks up pretty well. And actually, if we then connect the, pair, the same plot when it was measured in two years, you see that even at the plot level, we're picking up the progression and the worsening of symptoms with our method. Those two plots that we got wrong initially, one actually got corrected in a way. So our mapping wouldn't pick that up because it would say, look, here is very anomalous but the next year it's okay again, so we're not gonna map that as damaged, whereas this one is wrong. But this won't show up in our maps because it falls well below the 12.5 hectare threshold. The other thing that is interesting to note is I said initially we'll focus on damage levels three and four, but actually we're picking up the damage also, we're, we would be able to pick up the damage at lower uh, severity levels as well, it seems. If I now put on top of that where the olive orchards in the buffer zones sit, so, so those we assume have no damage, they sit really in the, in the lower left corner here of our, of our plot, which is also uh, a good sign because that means we, we wouldn't be mapping any damage in those. So now let me get to results. This is that initial map with the damage we saw in 2012, 2013. By the end of 14, uh, 15, sorry, this is the damage we detected. You see you have a couple of, of dots here. This might be damaged for other reasons. They might have been cleared, those orchards. Uh, it's not necessarily xylella, let me stress that. We're not doing attribution to the cause of the damage here, but the pattern we see through time is consistent with what we'd expect from xylella. We see the ground zero near Gallipoli, and we see the spread uh, in concentric circles, as it were, following the pattern that we know exists from the official monitoring data. Yeah, but it gives a more wall-to-wall -wall picture. The other thing to note in this comparison is that the colors here are darker than here. They're on the same color scale. What that means, darker colors, means that we have the positive infections detected a few years before we see the damage, which is also what we'd expect, of course. Damage, if it's xylella cause, should lag the infection. So that's another corroboration of our results. How big is the detected damaged area? So if we count up all those olive orchards that we detected as damaged, the, which are only the large ones, we come to 438 square kilometers by the end of 2017. Add to that 20%, which is roughly what sits in smaller orchards, we come to 650 square kilometers damaged areas. Uh, we are using aerial photographs to estimate uh, how many trees there are in each of these orchards. But actually, and luckily, you get pretty good approximation if you say there are 100 olive trees per hectare. Yeah? So multiplying this number with 10,000, which is then the uh, number of square meters, sorry, number of trees, you'd get per unit area, you come to six and a half million trees in those heavily damaged orchards. And that area, as you see here, oh, sorry, uh, is growing steadily. And uh, there's no sign of it slowing down. So with a minute left to wrap things up, we can map severe damage in large olive orchards uh, using satellite data supported by weather data. Our results are confirmed by field observations from the regional monitoring uh, 
uh, and the plant pathologist, which is completely independent and not used in the training or development of the method. Uh, the pattern we see is consistent with the official surveillance data. We have the ground zero near Gallipoli, damage trails infection, and the spatial pattern is consistent. By 2017, we estimate that in large olive orchards, 438 square kilometers had been damaged. And we foresee to update the analysis with the, when the weather data for 2019 becomes available uh, in the course of November. That's all I have. Thank you very much.